Hi everyone, my name is Nicole from Seriously Creative. In today's video I'll be discussing how I prevent resin overspill from ruining my pieces. I have some older videos on this topic but I really wanted to make a new video with all the techniques in one video. I used to find doming the most stressful part of making resin creations because it's the last step of such a long process and can be quite tricky. If you get overspill it can be a hard fix and can ruin the whole project. First of all, what is overspill? When we put a layer of resin on top of our resin pieces in order to make it look super shiny and finished, this is called doming. Overspill is a result of the doming resin running onto a part of the piece that we don't want it to, like on the back or the sides. I wanted to share this information with you so hopefully you won't have to find doming too frustrating. Tip number one. Make sure the resin's nice and thick before doming. This means there's less chance of it dripping over the edge and it will hold its shape. Tip number two. A flat work surface is essential. I use a level to check my surface is completely flat. If you're working with an uneven shaped piece, you can use a bed of rice to make the doming surface as flat as possible. Tip number three, use a barrier to protect the project. Without using a barrier of some sort while doming, you pretty much have three choices if you get overspill. So you can wipe it off with alcohol on a cotton tip or a baby wipe. I don't really recommend this anymore as it can be messy and is a good way to get resin everywhere, but this is what I used to do when I first started doing resin. You can let it dry and then try to sand it off with a Dremel sanding attachment or just sandpaper. Or the last option is to just throw it out because it can't be saved. Having a protective barrier in place will reduce the stress of overspill, possibly ruining your hard work. There's three kinds of barriers that I've used with great success and I'll explain the pros and cons of each. So the first one is liquid latex and this was the first kind of barrier I used when I was trying to do doming and trying to protect my pieces. So it does adhere really well to most shapes without dripping. But the downside is that it can be expensive. It has an awful smell and it can also affect customers with a latex allergy if you don't wash the piece extremely thoroughly. The next one is PVA glue and this is my personal favorite. It's really cost effective, it's really easy to apply, it doesn't have a smell. It can be used on really big pieces or really small pieces. The only downside is that it will run or drip if the piece isn't completely flat on the side that you're applying it. So it's not good for pieces that are curved, so I'll insert a clip of an example. And the last method that I use is painter's tape. So I like to use this for really large pieces like um, wall hangings. It's really easy to apply and it's cost effective, but it's not good for smaller or intricate pieces. So once you've chosen the protective barrier that's suitable for your project, you can apply it with a toothpick or cotton tip or spatula you can apply the glue or latex around the sides of your project, but I don't find this necessary. Just make sure you cover the whole back of the piece right up to the edges and pay special attention to parts of the piece that may be more likely to have overspill, like tight edges or holes or where you've attached the bale. Or obviously in the case of the tape, you just wrap it around the edges. And with the tape, make sure that it's really well adhered. If you're using glue or latex, give it a few hours to dry before flipping it over and starting the doming process. Once you have domed and it is dry, you can remove your barrier and any drips or overspill that may have occurred during the process will peel straight off.
I always wash my pieces after this step as sometimes the glue or latex will leave a little bit of a residue, but this is easily washed off with warm soapy water. And that's it for this video. Please check out my other tutorial videos for helpful tips on making your resin journey a little bit easier and leave any questions below and I'll do my best to answer them for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.